it's Dr. Parikh. It's module three now. I got a little chatty on module two. Uh, I'm going to try to rein it in and go a little lighter now. Uh, also, I had to, I usually record with the sun or with the win window behind me, but the sun's a little intense right now. So uh, instead, you get to see my board game shelf. And if I lean this way, you can see where we did a test patch of paint and have not actually painted yet. Uh, we painted a different room, but not this one yet. Moving is hard. So this week, uh, let's look at the to-do list. So I think there's fewer readings and videos this week, but I think some of them are a bit longer. Uh, and, and so we've got, from the book, we've got feminist perspectives on mothering and positive aging. So looking at female adult roles. Uh, there's also a journal article that looks at, uh, that talks about household labor and women. Uh, labor divisions are getting much more even than they have been in the past, but women still do more of more hours of childcare and housework. And there's also a lot of discussion of other things that are not typically considered housework, but that still fall to women and leave women feeling overwhelmed. Things like remembering who needs a doctor's appointment or being in charge of signing up for swim lessons. Um, and then related to that, there's an article. This is, so I'm prepping this course for spring 2020. And uh, this is something that just kind of happened recently where someone posted an extremely detailed uh, ad for a household manager, cook, and nanny. Uh, it, the woman is a CEO, and she used a lot of those skills to try to get the exact kind of person she wanted for her household. But there have been a lot of critiques about uh, what she's asking for. There's a lot, even in working women's group, I, like groups for working women, uh, that I'm part of, there are people saying, well, why did she have children if she didn't want to raise them? So, um, but it also gives, I think she really clearly articulates a lot of those sorts of tasks that typically fall to, you know, somebody's got to do it. Often it's women in a, you know, two gender relationship um, and that those tasks often get ignored. Uh, so then videos, there's this one, there's the lecture that I really recommend you do last. Um, and then there's some talks. One is about paid maternity leave and how that would affect things. Uh, there's also, this is a sort of an overview of a book that I'm a big fan of. I actually just gifted it to someone who's becoming a first time parent. Uh, but it's about a book by the academic Emily Oster. She's written Expecting Better and this one is Crib Sheets and it's, uh, she's an economist. And so she really approaches the data in as neutral and creative as a, of a way as possible about what are best practices with things like safe sleep, breastfeeding versus formula, uh, all sorts of things. Um, and then this was the best I could find that kind of, I wanted to think about female relationships other than work, motherhood, and maybe partnerships or other family relationships. So I really wanted to find things on female friendship. I had a little difficulty with that, but I did my best. Uh, and then this last one, is addressing, uh, and this, these themes often, so, sorry, this video is addressing sexual harassment, particularly in academia. Uh, so I put it here because it really felt to me like it was clearly about educational and career development, which fits with sort of womanhood as I'm defining it here. Um, but we'll talk a lot more about the Me Too movement and sexual harassment uh, when we talk about violence against women. I think that's when I put it. It might, I might have, there's so many things to stick terrible things in this course, because uh, I also might have put it under sex and sexuality. I forget which module, but in a future module, we'll talk about this more. But this particular little snippet really, to me, seemed like it fit best here. Um, it's a long talk on lots of things. I mean, she's interesting. I, her topic is very interesting. But the piece that I want you to watch is really just a little four or five minute snippet uh, and I believe this link should take you right to that point. Um, I don't know if the Blackboard link will do that. Yeah, so this link takes you pretty much right where I want you to start watching. Um, so you can see she's just giving a presentation, but she addresses directly uh, issues around um, sexual harassment in academic spaces uh, and also how that affects both men and women. So again, I, I talk a lot about how things that improve equality and equity often improve situations for lots of people. So uh, one of the examples I like is that 
creating wheelchair accessible spaces also welcome other people who are using wheeled devices like parents of young children with strollers. Um, so even though the, a lot of spaces are created to be accessible for people in wheelchairs, it improves accessibility for lots and lots and lots of people. Um, this last one uh, talks a bit about, um, it's specifically set in gaming. Uh, this one's set in video gaming. As you know, I enjoy board games, as you can see right over my shoulder. Um, but uh, this looks at Gamergate, which is sort of viewed as a big point where the sexism in the gaming industry became very pronounced. And it's very controversial. Um, board game is, is kind of a sister field to video gaming. We're not nearly as big or as popular, um, but there's a lot of crossover in people. Um, so this is something I was aware of through my hobby, um, but I think it really describes a lot of different things well. This one I'm going to pick out, I describe it as audio because that's an option and I really try to give you as much variety as I can because I know it's tough to wade through hours and hours of readings and videos each week uh, and especially with an accelerated course that's what you get and a lot of what where you're learning is happening is in reading and listening to these things. So this is a long article. Um, I read it as a long article but if you scroll down there's a an audio version that you can listen to. Um, Autumn. And so uh, I, want, I list it as an audio version. It's honestly most likely faster if you read it. So if you're in a hurry and the audio doesn't help you, just read it. Um, but I list it as an audio version because that just gives you more flexibility. So what's up this week? Tuesday is a check-in post. Works the same as last time. Uh, topical post, it's open choice unless... Check the discussion question over time. I might... Uh, realize that there are some topics where I do want you to answer specific things, but for the most part, it should be open choice. Let's look at the character analysis um, for this time. So discussion board, and we just go to three. So there's three, one, three, two, three, three. Uh, so I actually have this in a slightly different order than it's on the to-do list. I might try to fix that at some point. Um, so check-in, media report, topical post, those are all pretty set and routine. That's why I put those first. Excuse me. And then the last one is your character analysis article. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so for your character analysis paper, I'm asking you to find one source that's outside of class, that's a peer-reviewed academic source. Um, so here I've linked to uh, a video where I describe how to find articles in PsycInfo. So this is part of my, um, ooh, that's, they're all lovely shots. Uh, so this is from my Writing Insight course. I walk you through how to use uh, PsycInfo or other ones. I think this probably just goes to the beginning and I think I just am partway through because sometimes I'll go into my own videos to look for things. Um, so if uh, so, this walks you through how to get to the database, how to use it. If you're familiar with finding psych articles, you probably don't need to watch that video. Um, but it's just there as a resource if you're not. Uh, if you need help using the database, if the video isn't helpful, you can use the librarian. So just go to the front desk and, or use the chat window in the browser and say, I'm looking for an article for a psych class and I'm having trouble. Can you help me? You can also schedule to come to office hours. Um, keep in mind, you have to work ahead, though, for that to work. Um, so if you ask me the night before it's due, very likely I'm not going to have any time to help you. Um, but if you plan ahead and come to office hours early in the week or the week before, I'm happy to sit down and walk through it with you. Um, you can also email me for special appointment times, for meeting online, for meeting over the phone. For this, I think video chat or in person is best, but we could make phone work if we really have to. Um, so for this, I want you to describe your article. And for this one, I give you some flexibility. So I, um, you can, mo I assume a lot of you will probably write it. I also leave it open if you want to record a video. So you just telling us the story of the article. Um, if that seems more comfortable or faster overall. If you record a video, though, it's important to always try to describe any visuals. Um, because again, you, you want to be aware in case one of your peers has difficulty processing visual information. Um, and making sure that you're also, so you want to make sure that everything is both written and spoken. 
because you could also have peers who have hearing difficulties. Um, if you're going to do a video, it's really nice to use YouTube because YouTube puts in automatic captions. They're not perfect, but they're good enough that most people can could figure out from context clues what you're saying. Um, yeah, or you could just write. So I want you to just, in your own words, describe the main findings of the article and how you think the article applies to your character. So you, again, this is very much planning work for your um, for your article or for your paper. Hopefully some of this you can kind of use, you may be able to use this directly in your paper. Um, probably a lot of this you can kind of pick and choose and stick over in there. Um, I also wanna make sure you include a copy of the article. So you could download the PDF and attach it here. Uh, you can also, if you go into the library, so let me see. And I'm just going to search random, whatever. Um, I'll search. So I searched playing princesses, which is the article we had last time. So here on this search page, if you hit permanent link, you'll get a link that everyone can use. Um, there's some other ways that you can kind of link, but that's the easiest one I know of. Um, so if you just want to paste the link that everyone can get to as long as they have a Caldwell call login. Uh, I also want you to practice the APA reference and citation. And that's so that I can look here where it's kind of low stakes. I can just tell you if you're right or not. Um, if it's so far off, I'm just going to say it, it's really far. You need to get closer before I can tell you what to fix. Um, because if it feels like I'm redoing it rather than fixing it, um, I'm going to be less open to doing that. Uh, so get as close as you can to APA style. And if there's a few errors, I'll fix them. If it's still pretty far off, I'll give you some more resources for where to go to get them closer. Uh, let's see, weekly to-do list. So you've got check-in post, topic, media report, character analysis, follow up with all of those on Saturday. Um, I don't think I really, I didn't directly say what you should do as a response. I might edit that and add something in in the future. Um, for now, I'll say just kind of more generally, it's helpful if you can, you know, try whatever you do. Certainly be encouraging to each other, say what you like, but try to help them push their paper another step forward. Um, so if you're familiar with the source with the character, you can certainly make suggestions, but you can also ask questions that you think, you know, is there a way you can use this idea? Um, it's helpful to read the abstract for the paper that they linked and that'll, you may be able to even kind of add insight based on the paper. You certainly don't have to read the whole thing, um, but five minutes to carefully read an abstract is appropriate here. Uh, then you still have the quiz. Quizzes should be old hat at this point. Um, again, the topical post, remember, I give you, like, when I give credit for your time, I give, like, two hours or more uh, that I expect it'll take you to do these because I really expect you to, you know, choose sources, think about what they mean, make a thesis. Like, this is a mini paper. Um, so if it feels like the topical post is taking you, like, two hours, that's because that's kind of what it's supposed to take you. Um, the others are meant to be a little lighter, a little easier to do. Um, I think that's it for this week. Thanks. Bye.